You're on deck with Ursula Camille, and this is The Triage Room. The Triage Room is a podcast that encourages and empowers listeners to overcome obstacles of pain. Pain is the physical suffering or discomfort caused by illness or injury. When we describe the type of pain we're having, we're really describing the symptoms. Once we identify the symptoms, then we can deal with the roots. Welcome to the triage room. You're now on deck with Ursula Camille, and this is the triage room. Today's topic, decisions. Let's take a look at 2 Samuel chapter 16, starting at verse 5 through 13. And when King David came to bear him, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came. And he cast stones at David and at all the servants of King David and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shimei when he cursed, come out, come out, thou bloody man and thou man of Belial. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. Then said Abishai, the son of Zeruah, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. And the king said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruah? So let him curse. Because the Lord has said unto him, Curse David. Who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone, and let him curse. For the Lord hath bidden him. It may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction, and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. And as David and his men went by the way, Shimei went along on the hillside over against him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and cast dust. So here we have King David being cursed out by this man named Shimei. Shimei comes angry. He's mad because it comes from the house of Saul. Saul has died and he's blaming David and also putting it out there in his opinion. He's angry and blaming David in the sense of, hey, Saul is dead now. Absalom is doing what he's doing and it's on you. It's your fault. Angry, cursing at him, coming in cursing, throwing stones and kicking up dust. And then one of David's men is... Wanting to take off his head. And David is letting it be known. No. There's no, there ain't no need for that. And let's address this. Like what do I have to do with you? Like you are someone else's son. So why is this angering you so much. That you want to go to this level. I know who I am. I know my authority. I know how to handle this. And letting it be known. You know let him curse. Because maybe the Lord will repay me good for this cursing. David did not allow Shimei's ways to take him out of character, to take him out of who he is in his leadership role as king. He didn't come down to Shimei's level. So then in chapter 19, Shimei then comes in with a thousand men. He comes in with a whole crew. Now he openly repents to David. Because now he's come to himself and, okay, now David is, you know, all this st stuff has been resolved. And now he's in this place of, wait a minute, I need to go apologize to this man. So he comes with a crew. He doesn't come by himself. He comes with a crew and he apologizes to David openly, openly admitting that he sinned, openly admitting he was wrong. And David lets it be known, okay, I'm not going to take your life. Then in 1 Kings 2, David is now about to die. And David is giving Solomon, his son, instructions, giving him the insight on who is what, who has done what, reminding Solomon that he is a wise man and to handle things accordingly. So King Solomon doesn't just take what his father has told him and act on it immediately. He puts things in position and he has this conversation with Shimei 
to let it be known, hey, you need to build a house here in Jerusalem. You need to dwell here. You don't need to leave Jerusalem. For the day that you leave Jerusalem, you will surely die. And then Shimei agrees, telling King Solomon, yes, what you've said is, you know, good. He's in agreement. So a few years go by and Shimei gets word that two of his servants ran away to another city. And so Shimei goes after these servants, gets them and brings them back. Now word has gotten back to King Solomon that Shimei left and went to this place to get his servants. So King Solomon comes and he addresses Shimei. Did we not have a conversation? And did you not agree with what was being told to you? A command was given. You will not leave this city. And the day that you leave, you will surely die. So then Shimei dies. His decision not to obey what was agreed upon then becomes his end. So here we can see Shimei coming in, cursing going off openly publicly high disrespect to the king but david did not allow it to take him out of who he is take him out of character of who he is he didn't come down to shimei's level and shimei coming in with this whole crew of thousand men for this open apology to king david coming to his senses all of a sudden all of these things that shimei has done from the kicking up the dust throwing of the rocks, cursing over and over. These things to try to provoke David to respond, to react in some kind of way. Shimei even coming in with this apology. And then when King Solomon gives this instruction, gives this command for him not to leave the city, he agrees on it. All show and represent one who makes emotional decisions. Whether that emotion is anger, or whether that emotion is now I'm in a happy place and I feel good. So let me go take care of this. Come into agreement. I feel good on today. So today I agree with what you say. She may displayed the character of one who would make emotional decisions. Irrational decisions. Decisions in a moment. That were not well thought out. However he felt in the moment. Is how he conducted himself. However he felt in the moment is what he did. King David displayed in this particular situation, one who governs himself accordingly, understands his role as a leader and does not allow his emotions to cause him to make decisions he would later regret. David kept his focus and he also knew that Shimei and how Shimei carried himself and the things that Shimei did, if he was that willing to publicly curse David out, throwing rocks and kicking up dust and making all this commotion and acting the way that he did yet came with that many backing him up so he could do this open apology. David said, okay, I'm going to let my son know when it's time for him to lead. This is what you're dealing with. Be wise in how you handle it. And the reason, so David sharing this with Solomon is Solomon is now going to be king at that time preparing Solomon that what happened with the last generation what happened before will not go on to happen again what happened the last season won't happen again what decisions were made and things were done this won't happen going forward because she made display character of one he is who he is and at any given moment you're gonna get what you're gonna get so decisions are those that sometimes one may make emotional decisions that will cost them later. Decisions are those that in the moment when one is challenged with the high disrespect that one doesn't lose focus of who they are. They know who they are. And even with like with King David, he had one in his ear wanting to handle Shimei in a moment. He wanted to take his head off. David was like, no, David being disciplined enough in the decision-making area, focused enough in the decision-making area, not allowing someone else to tell him how to do his job. When it comes to decisions, we have to ask ourselves, are we making emotional decisions? Are the decisions that we make really wise decisions? Because if these decisions are emotional decisions, they are showing and revealing the character that is in place. Any given moment, any given situation is at risk for how one will conduct themselves. Is at risk for even in time of agreement, 
that that agreement will be broken based on how one that has a character and ways of a Shimei will do. King Solomon put something in place. He used wisdom. He put something in place so that he could go back. When once Shimei did not comply with what was given, yet he verbally agreed to it, King Solomon was able to go back, pick it up, let's have a conversation, and let's address it on site. To know that the consequence that is about to come is not because of me. It's not because of someone else's doing. But you agreed. You heard what was given. And you agreed to it and said it was good. So how then do you take what was agreed upon and that was given? Throw it to the side and go do what it is you want to do in the moment. Because you felt like doing it. The Lord will return thy wickedness upon thine own head. Decisions have consequences. Decisions have outcomes. Decisions have results. Which is why we must make decisions that are wise. And not make decisions based on emotions. Not make decisions based on false accusations. Not make decisions that are irrational. And here's my moment of transparency. I know what it's like to be challenged with one that is like a shimei emotionally driven emotional decisions emotionally driven with the words that come out of their mouth from one moment to the next you don't know what you may get but knowing that if i get down on that level that's gonna pull me out of a place i know what it's like in having conversation was not this disgust and to see one making decisions in a moment that goes all outside of what was agreed upon because in that moment, that's what they felt like doing. I encourage you, when it comes to decisions, and if you find yourself like Shimei, emotional, irrational, hot-headed, go whichever way the wind blows when you feel like going in that direction, forgetting the things you have vowed to God to do, the things you have agreed to do. I encourage you to turn away from those ways and not be emotionally driven and turn to God. If you are one that has been challenged on every side, like King David and like King Solomon, as King David did, peaceful about it, did not allow it to pull him out of character, I encourage you to do the same. And like King Solomon did, King Solomon brought accountability. There was a conversation, not just acting on a decision, but King Solomon put something in place and had a conversation to discuss. Did not we agree? Did, was not this what was agreed upon? Is this not what was spoken? Because decisions have outcomes. Decisions also have consequences. A wrong decision can be life-changing. A wrong decision can cost you everything. So I encourage you, when it comes to decisions, pray, seek God, Use wisdom, keep your focus, and let not those decisions be emotional decisions. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord, just to say thank you. I thank you for life, health, and strength. Lord, I ask you that those that may be in a place of being led by their emotions, that now is the time, God, that they look within, no longer making emotional decisions, no longer being led by their emotions, but use wisdom in what they do. Use wisdom in the decision making. Understanding that decisions have outcomes and decisions have results and decisions also have consequences. And that Lord, that they will seek you when it comes to the decision making process. They will seek you for direction and not allow themselves to make decisions based on anger and not allow themselves to make the decisions based on the moment, but come to you in all things. For your word says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. To trust you through it all. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. And I glorify your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You all be blessed. Thank you for joining me on deck in the triage room. To get the music you hear in this podcast or to stay connected, visit my website, UrsulaCamille.com. That's U-R-S-E-L-A-C-A-M-I-L-L-E.com. Sign up on my email list, get merch and more. 
Have an area of pain you want to address in the triage room? Send your email to the triage room at gmail.com. I'm your host, you Ursula Camille, signing off. Be blessed. One touch in your life will change. Did you know that Jesus reigns? One touch in your life will change.